Hey everyone! Today I'm going to show you how to make your very own sketchbook. Of course, you can always go out and buy one from the store, but when you make your own, you can use whatever kind of paper you want, and you can make it whatever size you want. So, let's get started! You'll need various papers. I'm using some from a bigger sketchbook, some textured black paper, some brown paper, and a bit of thick, good quality paper. Mat board. Glue. I'm using Mod Podge here. You want to use something that's acid free. A glue brush. A ruler. An X-Acto knife. A bone folder. I couldn't find mine so I just used a handle to one of my small files. An awl or push pin. A pencil. Waxed linen thread. A sewing needle. Something heavy. I usually use some wood and clamps but you can just use heavy books or something like that. Black vinyl or book cloth or decorative paper, and black elastic. A paper cutter is also nice to have, but not necessary. I wanted this to easily fit into my fringe purse, so I made mine five by six inches. The first thing you need in order to make a book is a text block. And a text block is made up of a bunch of signatures, which are groups of pages folded in half. I wanted this to be like my moleskin sketchbook, and those have 10 signatures made of 3 pages each. I cut my pages to be 6 inches by 10 inches, so once I fold them in half, they'd end up being 6 by 5 inches. One thing to make sure you do is to cut the paper so the grain of the paper is running up and down. A lot of people don't know that paper actually does have a grain to it. You can't see it, but you may have noticed it before when trying to tear paper apart. If you tear paper and it's straight, like this, that means the grain is running with the tear. If you tear it and it's jagged and isn't straight like this, that means you're tearing perpendicular to the grain. Another way to test the grain without damaging the paper is to fold it over like this. If it's springy and doesn't really want to fold that much, the grain is running this way. But if it's easily folding over, then the grain is running this way. You want everything you use, from the paper to the mat board, and if you're using paper or book cloth, for the cover to have the grain running up and down. It helps keep the spine strong, which in turn keeps the book strong. Anyway, I ended up cutting 15 pieces of paper with the normal sketchbook paper, 3 of the heavier paper, 6 of the black paper, and 6 of the brown paper. And then I folded them all in half. Use a bone folder or something similar to help press the fold down. Start grouping the pages together, three pages per signature. You can mix and match the pages if you want, but I decided to keep similar colors together, so I ended up with five signatures of the normal paper, one signature of heavier paper, two of the black paper, and two of the brown paper. Arrange the signatures however you like, and then place them under a heavy book or a piece of wood. I sandwiched it between some wood and clamped them together. Measure in half an inch on each end and mark straight across all the signatures then about an inch and a half to two inches in from those marks. If your book is smaller than this, you'll need to adjust these marks a little bit, but if it's bigger, then you can just add some more in the middle. You just want to make sure to have an even amount. Remove the text block from the weight, and then working one signature at a time, use an awl or a push pin to poke a hole at each mark. Once you're done, it's time to sew the block together. If you don't have waxed thread, you can run some thread through some beeswax. I've even heard of some people using dental floss instead. I actually used some sewing thread that I waxed up, but that really wasn't the best idea because it's so thin it kept wanting to rip the paper every time I tried to make it a bit tighter. So my text block was a little more loose than I tend to like them. Starting on the top signature, Thread the needle through one of the end holes, leaving about 2 inches of thread hanging out. Then sew in and out all the way through. Thread the needle into the next signature, thread it back out, and then thread the needle under the exposed thread from the first signature. This style of sewing is called the French link. I actually forgot to do this on this first signature, but I'll show you how to do it on the next one. Thread it into the next hole and back out. Tie it together with the end of the thread. And now sew into the next signature. Again, when you thread out in the middle, go up and under the previous signature's exposed thread. It should look like an X. 
Go through the next hole and then back out the last hole in that signature. Then thread the needle under the thread that's connecting the previous signatures together. And then you can continue on to the next signature. Repeat this until you've reached the end. You want to try to keep everything tight, but not so tight that the thread is ripping into the paper and causing the signatures to pull back and make the spine curve. Once you reach the end, just tie the thread off. Weigh or clamp the text block down again and spread a nice layer of glue onto the spine. Cut a piece of paper that's the same size as your spine and glue it down. I was always taught to use rice paper because it's thin and strong, but I think a normal piece of paper would be okay here. I actually skipped this step, which isn't that big of a deal, but I regret it because it made my book cover stick to the spine and I think that it kind of looks bad. Once dry, you can remove it from the weight. I wanted to mimic a moleskin, so I decided to cut the corner off of these edges. I marked the corners and then placed my ruler and used a utility knife to carefully cut through each paper. It obviously doesn't make them perfectly curved like a moleskin, but it works for me. Now measure your text block. It's normal for the signatures to have shifted a little bit and the folded paper edge to not be exact anymore, so you need to re-measure to make sure you cut your cover correctly. Add 1 4th of an inch to the height and 1 8th of an inch to the text block measurement and then cut two pieces of mat board to that size. And don't forget to align the grain up and down. One tip my professor had in my book arts class was that when you got your cover material, Check the grain and mark it up and down with the grain, so when you end up cutting the piece smaller and smaller, you know which way the grain runs because of your markings. When you start cutting it down a lot, it's harder and harder to check using the folding method, so this is just a nice little trick to help out future you. Also, since I cut the corners off of my text block, I cut them off of the cover pieces too. Anyway, I forgot to do the steps on how to create a space for the elastic until kind of late, so I had to use a smaller scrap mat board piece to show you guys how to do it. Measure in about an inch from the edges on the corners, and then make marks that are as wide as your elastic, and then make them into tiny rectangles about 1 8 of an inch tall, and then cut them out. Use your X-Acto knife or utility knife to extend the window about half an inch down. You just want to score through a few layers of the mat board for this part, not all the way through, and then carefully peel away those few layers. The goal here is to give the elastic a little space for it to lay in so it doesn't stick out too much. It's not necessary, it just makes the finished product look much cleaner. And now you can start putting the cover together. I decided to use vinyl for this part because I thought it looked really similar to a moleskin cover, but you could just use book cloth or decorative paper. Of course, if you use either of those, you'll need glue for these steps. Add the width of the covers in the spine of the text block and then add an additional 1 and 1 4 inch. This is how wide you need the cover material to be. Add an inch to the height of the cover material and that's how tall you need the cover material to be. Glue the mat board pieces to the cover material with one half inch cushion on these three edges. This is tricky to do with vinyl. I was using the grid on the back of the paper to help line stuff up, but obviously once I peeled that away I had no reference. So I tried to lightly score it with a knife first which seemed to work but it was kind of risky, so on the second piece I peeled it back a little, placed my cover, and slowly peeled the vinyl backing away while pressing the mat board down. Cut another piece of vinyl out that's 1 4th to 1 half inch wider than the gap between the covers and stick it down. This step is only for fellow vinyl coverers. It's just to make sure that this part doesn't stick to your text block. Fold the corners in and stick them down, and then fold in and stick down each edge. And now, you may notice this is the part where I realized I forgot the elastic holes, so I had to go and cut those out really quick. Cut a slit down the middle of the vinyl in those tiny rectangle windows and push it through so it sticks to the mat board. If you're using book cloth or paper, you'll need to add a little bit of glue to get it to stick. Stick your text block into the cover to temporarily figure out how much elastic you'll need. You want it to hold your sketchbook closed, but you don't want it to be too tight because it could damage the cover. Add about an inch and then cut the elastic. Thread the ends through the little windows on the cover and then glue them in place. The elastic probably won't want to stick at first, so just add a decent amount of glue and weigh it down. I used some of the backing from the vinyl to cover the glued up parts so it didn't get all over the stuff that I was using to weigh it down. Once that's dry, it's time for the final step. Finally! Stick a bigger piece of paper between the first and second pages of the text block 
and then brush glue all over the outside of the page. Line it up so there is one eighth of an inch on these three sides and press it down. Spread the glue on the other side of the text block and close the cover over it and it should be lined up correctly. You can see here how my mat board is already starting to warp weirdly because of the moisture from the glue because I didn't cut it with the grain aligned correctly. I'm not that worried about it though because it's just my sketchbook and I'm probably going to be rough with it anyway, but if it was more of an important book or if I was making it for someone, then I would probably redo the cover. Weigh down the book and let it dry completely. And there you go, your sketchbook is complete. Here it is next to what I usually use, a 5x8 inch sketchbook. And as you can see, I like stickers, so of course I gotta add one to this new one. Now it's done. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like. If you want to see more, then feel free to subscribe. I post art videos every Tuesday and DIY videos every Thursday. You can follow me on Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, Pinterest, and Snapchat, and I'll leave the information to those down below. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave a comment down below, and I'll see you next week.